Well, if you have ever wondered what the best times of the day to be sitting in the deer stand are in your rut funnel, let's say, during the whitetail rut, then I think you're going to like this video because I'm going to be talking about what 12 years worth of trail camera data tell us are the best times of the day in the months of October and November when it comes to chasing these whitetails. Just a quick reminder as we get going here, if at any point you guys get any value out of this video, do me one small favor and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That really helps me out and I really appreciate any support I can get from you guys. It motivates me to keep putting out videos like this. So uh, with that, let's just dive right into things. Just like my last video, I have been hanging on to and cataloging all of my trail camera photos since 2012. In this video, I'm going to show you guys what all of those compiled photos look like on a graph when taking the time slot. So I broke each photo into a time slot during the day and each time slot got a number of X number of tallies depending on how many photos there were from say 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., 10 a.m. to 11, 11 to noon and so forth all throughout the legal shooting hours of the day. And I've been building on this spreadsheet for many years now and I took all of my 2023 photos from last fall, added them into the spreadsheet to get an even more accurate distribution of, of data. And I added about 40 new photos. So that might, sound like, that might not sound like a lot, but keep in mind that I get rid of all nighttime photos or any photos taken outside of legal shooting hours. I just set them off to the side and, and don't count any of those. I also take out any does and yearling buck photos, of course. I don't want any antlerless or young buck photos included in this data set because, um, you know, the goal of this is to help us uh, be better deer hunters and connect on those older age class bucks. So all of the photos that I'm using in this data set come from bucks that I believe are two years old and older. And again, they've got to be in the daylight hours. So the types of areas that I'm getting these photos in are uh, big woods and public land type settings. Um, there, there's no photos in this data set that were taken on a food plot, over a bait site, over a, an egg field, anything like that. They're all back in bedding cover or, or well removed from any hay field or crop field if there are some in the area on private land. You know, my cameras and stands are back on the public land areas with that larger woods uh, tract of land. So I wanted to give you guys a sense of where I'm getting all these photos at. You know, if you if you had a, a set of data taken over a brassica food plot, for example, I'm sure it would be a much different distribution than what we're gonna see here on this graph. So wanted to give you guys a feel for uh, what types of areas, what types of habitat and settings I'm getting these photos in. These are the areas that I'm hunting. So without any further ado, let's dive in and just take a look at this graph here. Uh, right away, one of the first things that jumps out at me is just that big spike in activity right at the uh, 8 a.m. hour. We'll jump right back to the video here in a second, but I just wanted to show you guys real quick how we've got all of our trees browse blockered up for the year now. They'll stay this way all through winter and the next spring, and then we'll take this off and reuse them in subsequent years. But if you're someone who's been looking for a way to stop deer browse on your young trees, these browse blockers flat out work and it's a really low cost solution to protecting a whole bunch of trees. So if it's something that you think could help you out, just check them out at browseblocker.com and you can learn a little bit more about them on the website. You can see how we've got even the lower branches down here protected by the netting. You can really protect this whole tree for a really low cost. When you go to check out, if it's something that you think might help you, just say that you saw this on YouTube and we'll throw in 10 free clips and uh, nets on top of whatever you order. And you can see down at the bottom of the graph here, it's broken out uh, from all the way, or, you know, starting in 7 a.m. On the, on the left hand side and then each column is another one hour slot in the day and it goes all the way out till, you know, 5, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. in the evening. So... Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful distribution of data. And the more years that I add to this data set, the more accurate this becomes. And, and these peaks are getting really rounded out nicely now. And, you know, a lot of this is, is pretty intuitive, right? I mean, we're seeing that big uh, morning peak and that 8-ish a.m. time slot. And from there, it holds pretty high 
and we have a lot of daylight activity on the older age class bucks out until that kind of that lunch hour, noon, one o'clock, one thirty time frame, and then it starts just this kind of slow bleed, kind of this slow taper downwards in activity throughout the afternoon. Again, keep in mind, uh, I use all my trail camera photos from the months of October and November. But for the month of October, the vast majority of any October photos came in that last one week of the month. So just to give you guys a sense of you know when these photos are being taken. The bulk of these are, are probably taken in the first two weeks in November. And then there are still quite a few taken in kind of that mid to late November timeline you know it gets pretty slow throughout the afternoon you can see just looking at this graph you know things kind of taper down which makes sense I mean that lines up well with what I see throughout the day when I'm on stand and then we have this little evening spike you know which, which again that's to be expected um, that that's a, a key time kind of right before sunset we see that spike up in movement again you know I'm looking at this graph I, I was kind of struck by the fact that you know, although there are these peak times, um, th there's really not a bad time to be on the deer stand. You know, if I were going to get down, like let's say I'm not going to do an all-day sit, you know, I, I do fewer all-day sits than I do partial day sits. So when I do get down, um, you know, that kind of early to mid-afternoon, you know, if I'm going to spend any time hiking back to the truck or grabbing a bite to eat or recharging for the evening, it's going to be kind of that early to mid afternoon, kind of that 1.30 to 3.30 time period. That's the slowest time of day. But, you know, even with that being the case, you could still get it done. I mean, look, there's still orange bars during these time slots. Bucks are still moving during this, this time of the day. I remember uh, years ago, I shot a nice uh, kind of a gnarly Northwoods eight pointer. I think it was 2.30 PM, you know, several years ago now, but um, it, it just goes to show, I mean, those all day sits are really, really valuable, especially in these types of areas that I'm hunting, these big woods and public land areas, you know, and in, in some cases, like in the areas where I bull hunt and closer to home here in northern Minnesota, there may be a, a hay field a half mile away on private land, or there may be a, a corn field or a, a bean field, you know, and up by, up by the highway on the private land areas, but I'm, you know, back a mile away in the public land, in the in the big swamps and, and ridge systems back on the public. So um, there, there's really not a bad time to be on stand throughout the whole, you know, waking daylight hours of the day during this peak rut timing. And that's what's so cool about the rut and why I try to do a handful of all day sits every year, uh, just because you, you really don't know when you're going to get it done in those types of scenarios. I know at our deer camp where we gun hunt, uh, we all agree that kind of that 8 a.m. to like 10.30 a.m., we always call that the golden hour because it just seems like that's when we kill the vast majority of our bucks when we're up rifle hunting. And then even some of the areas where, like where I bull hunt and, and elsewhere where I gun hunt, um, just, just any time up until lunchtime is, is so good. And uh, it's really evident in this graph. And like I say, the more years that go by and the more data I add to this, the more defined this is becoming. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do me a favor and hit the thumbs up and then drop a comment down below to let me know what times of day are your guys' favorite times to be out on the deer stand. I hope you guys are getting after it. The season is upon us here in Minnesota and, and I know other seasons are opening up on October 1st. So good luck this fall and I will catch you guys on the next video.